is up everybody welcome back to a brand new video and today I'm excited because we have a brand new concept that I haven't really seen anybody do on YouTube I've seen a couple people do variations of this concept but the concept in general is I've been doing TikToks a lot more as of late you can go follow me over on TikTok at Powerbomb Inc I'm trying to keep everything somewhat consistent but yeah you can go follow me over there but TikTok has a filter system where there is a square above one person's head where they just show up a random wrestler, a random superstar. The idea is to make a full-blown WrestleMania super show. And the idea is I'm going to draft, essentially draft 10 wrestlers, 10 men, 5 to 10 for the women, 5 for the tag teams, and I, the limitations are I can only use the WWE Championship, I can only use the Tag Team Championship, the United States Championship, and one Women's Championship. I cannot use anything else. Also, another limitation being, I can't have wrestlers that have deceased, passed away, or wrestlers that have been retired for more than five years. So that is spanning all the way to WrestleMania 35, where Batista had retired. So that's where we're kind of at, and I'm very excited. Stick around to the end, because at the end, we're going to be taking the main event and then throwing it into ChatGPT and figuring out what ChatGPT would come up with that storyline for the event. But Either way, before we get started, make sure you go down below, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe, and here we go. All right, do not mind the blind ranking tag team list. Uh, I, I was gonna say, we're trying to get brand new, we're trying to get six tag teams. I actually changed it from the five to six because it feels a lot more rounded out. But also, if a tag team like D-Generation X, Triple H, and Shawn Michaels, I cannot draft them, and I cannot use them in the Super Show as singles competitors. If I draft them, if they are on the show as a tag team, I have to book them as a tag team. And the goal is to get used as many people as I can. But starting off, we got Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston, The New Day, rated RKO. That kind of sucks because Edge and Randy Orton would be great on their own. But either way, dang it, dude. We got Triple H and Shawn Michaels, another one. Could have been great separately. Who do we have? We cannot use them because they... One of them has deceased, RIP. We got Miz and Morrison, number four. Number four, Miz and Morrison. We cannot use, we cannot use them. We got Hardy Boys, I'm fine with that. And then hopefully we can get one more. If not, we're gonna be fine. Okay, the Usos, that is our list. We got the New Day, we got Rated RKO, we got D-Generation X, Miz and Morrison, the Hardy Boys, and the Usos. Now, onto the women. Alrighty, now we are choosing 5 two, 10 women. We got Ronda Rousey, okay? Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey as our first pick. Bailey as our second. Bailey as our second. We got Kelly Kelly. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. Kelly Kelly. We got Mercedes Monet, Sasha Banks, since it's the WWE one. Becky Lynch. We can get Charlotte. That'd be a fantastic fatal four way. We got Natalia. We got Natalia. Let me, I'm gonna shoot for eight. Charlotte, bow. And our last one. AJ Lee, we cannot use AJ. She's been retired for more than five years. That really does suck. But we get Rhea Bloody Ripley. Alrighty, now on to the men. All right, lastly, the men. And if we already drafted them in a previous round, like the tag teams, or if they have passed away, or if they are have been retired for more than five years, we cannot choose them. And we're going to go from number one to number 10. And if you know, we, depending on how many we can get, then we'll just end up missing those. But Logan Paul, that he is capable of being on the roster. Logan Paul, same thing with Gunther. That's starting off strong. Two people, same thing with Shinsuke. Shinsuke is good. Bobby Lashley is okay. Jeff Hardy, we cannot use him considering we have him in the Hardy Boys. Big Show. Has he wrestled in the last five years? Has he? I'm going to put him in nine just just because I don't want to mess anything up. John Cena certainly has wrestled in the last five years. Who's next? Rand cannot take Randy. He already have him in rated RKO. Sucks to see AJ Styles, though. AJ Styles is certainly possible. And then lastly, Stone Cold. I'm fine with it. 
Stone Cold, that rounds out the list. So far, we got Logan Paul, Gunther, Shinsuke Nakamura, Bobby Lashley, John Cena, AJ Styles, and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, give me a hell yeah! Hell yeah! So after some time of putting pen to paper and figuring out what the best WrestleMania card would be via what TikTok provided me, I have the full card. It is roughly eight matches from start. We're going to be starting off with a tag team championship ladder match between the Hardy Boys, the Usos, the New Day, Miz, and Morrison. Now, Coming into it as champions, Miz and Morrison would be going into it as champions. You guys can figure out who would be winning every single one of these matches. But in my personal opinion, this would be an absolute banger. It, it, we would need to start off the night right. Very similar to WrestleMania 40, but this is a one night show. So we kind of just need to throw everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. And I believe the Hardy Boys, New Day, Usos, and Miz and Morrison could create some magic in the wrestling ring. Next up, we have the women's a women's tag team match between Kelly Kelly and Natalia versus Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair. Now, this is probably the most out of the blue, out of nowhere match that you know I could probably think of. And it's I I know I messed up from the four horsemen, the four horse women matchup, but it was only because I didn't think with what I was dealt with left would be good enough. Now, going into this matchup, it's not much, it's kind of bare bones, but that's just what I had left. I had Rhea, Charlotte, Kelly Kelly, and Natalia, and you know what, I think coming into it, Kelly Kelly returning Natalia to help out Natalia in some way, shape, or form, trying to bring back like the older women's, you know, basically just saying, hey, we were better back then. And then you have Charlotte Flair who was kind of now the present but still uh, past but still the present and now Rhea Ripley setting their differences aside to tackle the bigger the you know the more uniform women between Kelly Kelly and Natalia kind of just a mess but I think honestly it would be it would be su suffice for a WrestleMania matchup next up we have the women's championship from Becky Lynch the champion taking on Ronda Rousey. Now, WrestleMania 35, we did want this matchup, and we didn't get it, we didn't get it, we didn't get it, we didn't get it, and now, it's at this point, it's just not believable. But if we can get Becky Lynch back up to the stardom, if we can get Ronda as hated as we physically can, maybe, maybe, just maybe, it would get close to the hype that I had at one point. But either way, with just how much the women had left, like, if I threw all four horsewomen in there, what would I have left? I would have Kelly Kelly, Natalia, and Ronda. Quite frankly, that's not a good match. So, as of right now, Becky Lynch versus Ronda Rousey for the Women's Championship. Next up, we have the United States Championship match between the champion Bobby Lashley taking on Shinsuke Nakamura and the ring general Gunther. Now, this triple threat, it would be very, very hard hitting between the big powerhouse and Bobby Lashley taking on the strong style, the quick strike, the capabilities of Shinsuke Nakamura trying to get him back up to his NXT days and Gunther just being all around probably the greatest ring in-ring performer in WWE today. I think it would be one massive matchup that honestly would just be there for match quality alone. Going into this matchup, Bobby Lashley, the United States champ, kind of just, I guess, defending Defending, there we go, defending the United States Championship's honor against Gunther and Shinsuke, both of them not being from the United States. Uh, that's just kind of just quick thinking, you know? But yeah, I feel like that would be a good match, and you guys can tell me who you guys think would win. Next up, I kind of shot myself in the foot here. I put the two teams to face each other that I wanted all four of them to be separate, so it doesn't really, you know, it, I don't have much to go off of here. But we have... The team of D-Generation X taking on the team of Rated RKO. And in their prime, when this feud was happening, I absolutely loved it. But nowadays, probably wouldn't work out too well, considering both Triple H and Shawn Michaels probably couldn't go in the ring anymore. Randy Orton and Edge both still at the top of their game. Insane. But with just how much, hopefully, Edge and Randy can carry Hunter and Shawn to a decent match, unlike the Brothers of Destruction match, where... It was just four guys who couldn't wrestle that much or that well anymore. And now hopefully it's two 
two guys to hopefully help propel and level it out. But either way, I think it would be a fun nostalgia trip. And yeah, let's go on to the next match. Next up, we have Bailey taking on the returning Sasha Banks. Now, in this matchup, I wanted to have this matchup because I felt like the story made the most sense. Uh, Sasha left the WWE to come back and Bailey's not liking it, you know? She doesn't want that to happen, but she doesn't want Sasha to be able to come back and just get everything, considering she's been busting her ass for years dealing with damage control, dealing with Bianca, dealing with most women in the roster, and Sasha to just come back and just get, you know, get title matches and whatnot, Bailey doesn't like it. And she didn't have Sasha, her best friend, to deal with damage control, to deal with Bianca, to deal with anybody else. So, I, I feel like it would be a fun match going back to their TakeOver Brooklyn match. It would be an absolute banger. It would be an absolute banger. And, you know what? That's, that's the goal. That's the goal is to make a WrestleMania Super Show. And I believe with that match and with everything I've done so far, I am accomplishing this goal. Next up, with only two matches remain, we have the WWE Championship match between AJ Styles taking on the WWE Champion, Logan Paul. Now, I know, despise me because I put the championship on Logan Paul, but you cannot tell me that this match would be phenomenal, pun intended. This match would be insane. And granted, I think the story is there to work with it. Logan Paul winning the WWE Championship, very similar to how he did with the United States Championship kind of holding it hostage, holding it for a long, long time, to which AJ, who's been in the business for decades, who has been the workhorse in almost every single company he's been in, to try getting that championship back, it'd be very similar to a Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes match. It'd be very similar to those matches, like an AJ Styles, John Cena even. It would be a very, very fun match. The promos would be great. The storyline would be great. And the match altogether would be the cherry on top. And in our main event, we have Icon versus Icon. Greatest of all time versus greatest of all time. Mount Rushmore versus Mount Rushmore. We have probably the two best of all time. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus John Cena. Now on paper, this is the biggest match of all time. You can put down in the comments and tell me, oh no, that's not right. John Cena versus Stone Cold would be the biggest match of all time, okay? The promo battle would be insane. The match quality nowadays, not good. But the fact, the star power alone would reach Hogan Rock. It would reach Hogan Rock, which the match in general, not the best, but the crowd would bring it up. Now. Before, we do have ChatGPT coming up with the storyline for it and the whole build up to it. But before we get that, as ChatGPT can start loading up right now, I would like to ask you guys to go down below, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Put down who you guys think would win every single one of these matches. Put down who you guys would book with what I was given. And then at the end of the day, put down if you guys want to see more of these because I am having so much fun in just creating it. And you know what, if we can get some more feedback, if we can get some more engagement, I will be doing a lot, lot more of these. Also stick around because every Monday, every Friday, and every single PLE, I'm gonna be doing live reactions. So you can come hang out. It's a fun, fun little watch party. And now, back here. I think ChatGPT is done. Alrighty, so we had to change up the setup a little bit only because I need to be able to see my computer in order to read off what ChatGPT has said. So, let's get going. WrestleMania Main Event 2 on E25, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus John Cena. The build-up timeline, starting at the Royal Rumble 2025, there's a surprise appearance during the Royal Rumble match. Stone Cold Steve Austin makes a surprise appearance, creating a massive pop for the crowd. His appearance is a shocking one is a shocking one-off as he has been retired for a while and this moment feels special. He eliminates a few wrestlers before being thrown out himself. John Cena, a strong competitor in the Rumble, looks on with a mixture of respect and competitive fire as Stone Cold exits. There's a post-Rumble promo. The night after the Royal Rumble, John Cena cuts a promo on Raw, expressing his respect 
for Stone Cold, but also his desire to be recognized as the top star in the company. John Cena implies that while Stone Cold had his time, this is his era now. Where Stone Cold returns. Stone Cold returns to Raw, interrupting Cena during one of his high-profile promos. Stone Cold confronts Cena, questioning his current place in the WWE and his methods. Sparks a heated exchange between the two legends. Austin suggests that Cena has become complacent and needs to prove himself once again, setting the high stage for a high-stakes showdown. There's a build-up matches. Over the next few weeks, Cena and Austin have several confrontations that result in chaotic brawls and physical altercations, further intensifying their feud. They engage in a series of tag matches where they're on opposing teams, showcasing their abilities and building tension. So we're getting John Cena and Stone Cold on live, free television. You're welcome, Netflix. You're welcome, Canada. There's a social media feud. The feud also spills over onto social media with both stars exchanging heated posts and taunting each other, drawing in the fans and keeping the hype alive outside the ring. Come March time, there's a final contract signing on the final Raw before WrestleMania. A contract signing for their match is scheduled. Tensions reach their peak during this segment with both stars trading intense verbal barbs and nearly coming to blows. The segment ends with a brawl that leaves both Cena and Stone Cold standing tall, but with palpable animosity between them. WrestleMania 25, the match build up, the match is billed as a clash of errors, the Attitude Era icon versus the modern day face of WWE. The build up em emphasizes the respect both have for each other, but also highlights their different philosophies and styles. This promotional material, WWE airs a series of video packages and vignettes as they do. Uh, and then the match details, the match storytelling. The match is a classic clash of styles with Stone Cold's brawling and high impact moves going against Cena's power moves and resilience. The match tells the story of both stars pushing their limits and showing mutual respect despite their fierce rivalry. The finish, after a hard fought battle, Cena manages to catch Stone Cold Steve Austin with an attitude adjustment as Cena goes for the pin. Stone Cold kicks out, leading to a dramatic sequence of near falls and finishers. Finally, John Cena locks in the STF. And after a long struggle, Stone Cold Steve Austin taps out, with John Cena winning the match and earning a huge pop from the crowd. After the match, Cena extends his hand to Stone Cold, who initially hesitates, but eventually shakes Cena's hand, acknowledging him as the top star of the current era. The show ends with both legends sharing a moment of mutual respect, leaving the audience with a sense of closure and satisfaction. Now, honestly, is that... I love the finish. I love the finish between the two because Stone Cold refusing to tap out against Bret Hart, now tapping out against John Cena and John Cena's retirement tour, all of this. I'm very happy with how my WrestleMania Super Showdown has concluded. But at the end of the day, TikTok, thank you for drafting. If you guys think this match would end differently, put down in the comments. Subscribe. Go follow me on Instagram and TikTok, both Powerbombing. Go down below, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Have a good day, have a good night, whatever the time is for you, and goodbye.